just a couple of minutes before we launch into the Broad Art Advantage, uh, part one in a two-part series, today's piece, taking a look at collection development. We have a number of people logged in and I know how much everybody loves Zoom. So we're gonna give it just another minute or so uh, to allow for any technical difficulties or last minute troubleshooting. While we wait, uh, we do wanna get a little reader's advisory in. It's collection development after all. So if you would, as you mouse down towards the bottom of your screen, you're gonna see a Q&A box. If you wanna click on Q&A, please share a title with us, either one that you've recently read and enjoyed or perhaps one that you're about to start that you're excited about. For example, The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. Reality's been a little too real lately. I'm moving out of adult uh, back into YA. And if anybody's read this, tell me if you think it was good, because I know this is the beginning of a trilogy and I hate to invest if now is not the time. Let's see, oh, oh, Michelle is reading Normal People by Sally Rooney. I absolutely loved that book and Conversations with Friends. I haven't watched the uh, made for streaming mini series version yet. Have you had a chance to watch that, Michelle? Oh, and Tom is reading Where the Crawdads Sing. Boy, we love that book. That, that's the book that just keeps on giving. Fun fact, that was a debut. Probably all of you know this, but Many people did not see that one coming. <laughs> All right, I see Ellery Adams, Miracle Springs Mystery Series. Thank you, always need another mystery series. Emerald Blaze by Alona Andrews. Yeah, that's for those of you who have standing orders or who are about to hear about standing orders, you'll know that author well. Uh, social Media Survival Guide. Um, I bet everybody would, would uh, need that reference material right now. Let's see, Dear Edward, oh Jeanette, that's not one I've read yet. I'm getting some titles also. Mm. All right, good choice. Michelle says she's watched the first two episodes of the show. Braver than I am. I actually finished both books and I still haven't watched it because I'm just too afraid that the adaptation will disappoint me. <laughs> Oh, The Silent Patient, yep. Some heavy hitters. So far I'm seeing a lot of titles that um, I can envy or be in awe of your, your literary reading taste. I sort of wish I hadn't gone first with the YA. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't see a lot of my, my standard fair genre fiction in here. We, we've got some cerebral people joining us today, Julie. <laughs> Wonderful. I know, wouldn't have it any other way. All right, so it's about three minutes past. I think we want to go ahead and get started. Um, once again, hello. We're very happy to have you joining us today. Um, we know many of you are in the process of either reopening or trying to plan for some version of a reopen, whether it's curbside service or some other uh, version of abated public service. Um, just so you know, we do wish you very, very good luck. These are trying times. We hope everyone is safe and well. And um, just as a reminder, Brodart, of course, we're here today from our homes, but we're also in the office. We are in business, back in business, as it were, and we're available to help. So please don't hesitate to reach out if there's anything we can assist you with. All right, so for the main event, the Brodart Advantage. This is our approach to collection development. Uh, before we jump in here with the reason why everybody joined us today, apart from new title discovery, uh, we want to handle a little bit of housekeeping. So if you're wondering why mine is the only voice you're hearing right now, all participants were muted upon entry, not because we don't want to hear your voice. We could all use a little more human interaction these days. We can just really only record one at a time. And we are recording this. So if you have a coworker who was hoping to get to join us for the live event this afternoon and they were unable to make it, just know that anyone who signed up will get an email uh, linking them back to a recorded version of this webinar as well. We're going to look to get it added to the Bibs homepage very soon. Um, so beyond that, I will say that we are also going to try and divide the content as we go. There'll be some natural opportunities for breaks. Uh, so we will stop and take questions periodically, but please feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A. I will be monitoring that. Um, and that's that introductions. My name's Andy Paluzzi and everybody. 
I'm the chatterbox who's talked this long and not, not introduced herself. Um, I'm the library services consultant for the Mid-Atlantic for RoadArt. Prior to joining the team um, in September, I guess that was actually August of 2019, um, time flies when you can't get a haircut. I'd worked for New Orleans Public in Louisiana as a librarian, and prior to that, Mid-Continent Public Library in Kansas City for about eight years. So I feel your pain. <laughs> and I'll turn it over to my colleague, um, hi, everyone. My name is Julie O'Connor, and I am a collection development project librarian at BroadArt. A um, little bit about myself. I've been with BroadArt for about um, coming on 16 years. Um, uh, went to library school at Wayne State University in Detroit. So a shout out to any fellow warriors out there. <laughs> um, but I uh, learned to love libraries as a, uh, a student worker in college in tech services and then circulation. And when the time came to say, what do you want to do with your lives? I, I, I looked back and decided the happiest I was was as around books and being and I want to be a librarian. So that's the short of it. It took many years to get there, but um, I'm here and I'm so happy to be helping so many libraries around the country. Um, it's, it's, I, I feel privileged to do that, to just help in any little way. And um, I help with ongoing uh, collection development, but also opening day collections. I'm almost coming up on 70 projects in the 16 years I've been here. So um, I haven't said, I'm not going to say I've seen it all, but I've seen a lot and I can um, guide, uh, you know, if, if another library is, um, uh, having difficulty um, trying to rectify a situation what, or, or whatnot, um, I can give some guidance and say, you know, this is what worked for other libraries and things like that because um, um, I've had the advantage of working with so many. So um, with that being said, thank you everyone for joining us today uh, to talk about the ongoing uh, collection development side of things and um, how BroadArt uh, uh, ha has a variety of products and services to offer to make your jobs easier. Um, so without further ado, um, and I apologize, how do I make this go? <laughs> I need one of those social media books. I'm trying to figure out how to make this go move. <laughs> one moment, please. I can't see. Oh, there we go. There we go. It was just slow. <laughs> anyway, so here we are. So BroadArt knows libraries. And um, just to give you a background of our collection development department, which is um, full of coders to make sure that the information is correct that we get from the publishers and translate it to librarian speak. Um, we have nine librarians on staff and one that is going to library school as we speak. And um, with over 300 years combined BroadArt and library collection development experience. Um, they are all over the United States, literally from coast to coast, from Washington State to uh, Georgia and Florida. Um, we value expertise more than where you live. And um, we're so happy to have them on our staff. And um, they really keep things um, chugging along with everything that we can offer to you um, with our services and especially our uh, selection lists. Um, so I know the challenges of selecting because I have selected on behalf of libraries and it's very time consuming and there are so many titles to consider and especially when you add in uh, print on demand and self publishers and all of that fun stuff. Um, you know, the, the, the universe is um, expansive and we have about 5 million titles on our title file, but 2.7 million have an available um, or not yet published status. That's a lot to go through. Um, and our tools, uh, which I've listed um, on the slide, shows um, the various ways you can uh, uh, access these titles in a meaningful way. Um, so a couple of weeks ago and just last week, my colleagues uh, did a bibs demonstration and to show uh, bibs tips and tricks and as well as where to find some selection lists and how to search and whatnot. At the end of this uh, session, 
I will go back to bibs and point out a couple of really important um, selection lists that I think everyone should know because we spend a lot of time on them and, and it's regarding diversity, um, steam lists, uh, topical lists like how to use social media <laughs> because uh, we're all trying to do that and how to zoom and all the new normal things uh, as well as like the Black Lives Matter movement, um, epidemics, uh, things like that. So I would like to circle back around to show you a few more things on bibs um, and uh, but in the meantime I'm going to talk about uh, some ongoing services called our Fast Tips Standing Orders tip selection lists, and we have two types of those, and collection builders, which is literally what it means, building a collection that needs some help. So going to bibs, just as a refresh from last week and the uh, couple of weeks, weeks ago, uh, we offer, you can tell that it was built by librarians and our wonderful technology team at Broadart. Uh, as well as um, in its four librarians. So we have a lot of flexible searching and list building, selection and ordering. It's really uh, uh, user friendly and, uh, and anyone can use it because it's free of charge. You have unlimited users. You don't need to share an ID or anything like that. There's no need for that. Uh, just let us know if you need a new account set up and we would be happy to, to do that for you. Uh, you can uh, build grids in there, so all your collection codes, item types, branches, quantities, all sorts of things. Um, it's, it's really advantageous to have that available to make uh, everything run smoothly, your selecting run smoothly. Uh, you, have, you can build and share carts, and it's easy to share to multiple people even. Uh, we receive daily inventory updates from the publisher so you know if uh, hey they've got they've got this in their warehouse I really want it and oh good it's it's there um, so we should be able to get it we have uh, mark records and items for EDI ordering as well as a smart holdings icon and that's a z39.50 connection to your catalog and you can see in the list in your bibs list if there's an H icon, that means that it made a match in your catalog and it's by ISBN. And a lot of people find that to be pretty helpful. So because Broadart works solely with libraries and not in a retail setting, we, we really stress the importance of library friendly data. We know that age, you know, knowing the age ranges are important and the descriptors, which is another word for type of material like reprints, short stories, translations. That's important to know when you're selecting a book. What's the Dewey number? We also have LC. Uh, subject headings. We have uh, our homegrown Broadart tip subject headings, but we also have BISAC, LC, and Sears. We have the publisher annotations, and if reviews are available, uh, we uh, link those to the title. And then we have all sorts of awards, uh, bibliographies like the Wilson catalogs, uh, best of lists, et cetera, and Broadart sources. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. It's, it's another name for our silver tips list. Um, those, those are really important to, uh, to note if they've been in one of our, our lists. And then uh, reading programs I know are important for the, the children's librarians. Uh, we have Accelerated Reader, Lexile, and Reading Counts. And just to give you an idea for those uh, who haven't seen a title detail on bibs, uh, this just shows um, uh, just a sample um, from the latest Baby Mouse Tales from the Locker uh, series. And it shows all of that information I just mentioned. Um, and anything that isn't a hyper, or it, it's blue in here is a hyperlink. So if you clicked on the baby mouse tails from the locker, uh, it would take you to the rest of the titles in that series. If you clicked on the hardcover bind, it would take you to, if there are other binds available, or um, uh, actually uh, readily available, well, not readily, they could be out of print, but they, you would see the alternate binds if you just click on that title. They could be available, they may not be. And then you go down to the subjects and those are all hyperlinks as well, but you can see like there's the Brodart sources um, in the middle there with the Brodart's, Brodart's Fresh Reads for Kids tip selections. That's one of our um, silver tips list. So we selected it for that. 
And then of course, Alexa leading, reading level is at the bottom. And then the um, publisher annotation. Uh, this hasn't been reviewed yet. So uh, keep that in mind when I talk about uh, building um, uh, our, another selection list called diamond tips list. So the hallmark, um, one of Brodart's hallmark um, uh, inventions was the layering of uh, lists and uh, standing orders. So it's called layered collection development. And what this is, is you would take your standing orders, those must have titles and their popular authors and series forthcoming because we wanna get those pre-pub and you would let Brodart monitor those for you. So you know, um, you don't have to wait like, oh, I wonder if that new baby mouse title came out or I wonder if that new um, dog man, uh, uh, Pete the cat, fly guy, all of those. I know I'm doing children's and there's lots of teens and adult as well, but for this example, we're just doing children's. You know, I don't know when they're gonna come out. So, and I, and I know I'm gonna want it. So Brodart will monitor that for you and actually build the order for you. And then they can uh, give it to you to order or we can order it on your behalf. But those are off the top. That's the first layer, we absolutely want those. Well, there's a bunch of titles left after that to consider. And that's where we get into selection lists. And in this case, uh, we want selection lists for children's picture books and we want them for children's fiction. Uh, one way to narrow that universe of titles would be to um, uh, pull review journals. And we have 10 review journals plus the New York Times Book Review. Uh, it's a citation, it's not a full review, but we have full text reviews of, uh, for 10 journals um, plus online reviews. And we can um, uh, consolidate those and put them in a selection list. But like you saw with that earlier example um, with the baby mouse title, it's not reviewed. So not everything gets reviewed. Um, some other uh, areas, board books don't get typically reviewed, easy readers or early readers, however you say it, um, large print. So what about those titles? Well, let's do another layer or mix in another layer to this and add in some, some of those Brodart programs, AKA silver tips lists. How about demand from other libraries? What other, other libraries are buying? Print run, we all know about print run and that can vary between adult and children's. 100,000 print run for adult fiction is pretty common. Um, you know, that you saw the, in the example, it was 17,500 for the baby mouse title. So there's a big um, uh, gap in between those, but we recognize that and we would uh, advise which, what to use if you, if you chose to use print run in your selection list. And then there's your favorite publishers, subjects, and maybe series and authors that you uh, didn't want to commit to buying as a standing order, but you would like to see in a selection list. So we could add in that as well. So Andy has a good analogy <laughs> that makes me yeah. very hungry when she says it. <laughs> I either have a good analogy or I have a reason for dessert. So uh, Julie and I were talking about this and really every time she would say layered collection development, which does resonate you know, on a collection development level for me, um, I would also start thinking about layer cake. Maybe, maybe I'm watching a little too much Great British Baking. <laughs> <laughs> in the evenings with all of this free time that we have in the evenings um, but essentially when I think about this I I do I can't help it I go all the way so I uh, the frequent authors and series standing order program the true serial um, standing order program called continuations which I know Julie's going to get into I always think of that as the cake that's the sponge and the silver tips list which are incredibly well curated lists by our collection development team they're um over 20 programs resulting in hundreds of lists. That's your buttercream icing. And uh, then we do have a few other premium or less regular services. One is called Diamond Tips, which Julie's gonna go into good detail about this, but essentially that takes a lot of that curation effort and it runs it through the filter of your selection criteria. It is something that could be set up based on the way that you would select uh, right down to the level of preferred journals and review sources and that can be pushed to you regularly. And then the last that I know we're gonna go into more detail, collection builder, that's the cherry on top. You know, it's not, uh, it's not every month, it's periodic. Maybe you've got to refresh 
a chunk of your adult nonfiction because you've done some deep weeding by subject and you need to backfill with titles that are current. Or maybe you've just received a grant and all of your effort has to go into the programmatic piece of that grant or the outreach piece of that grant, but you've got to have a collection to back it up as well. So those are things that we can do. And if you weren't hungry for cake, you're welcome. Um, back to the real stuff, back to collection development. Julie, you can go into more detail. All right. I will try to focus and not think about, because I think about desserts all the time. So, but I will be strong and get through this and maybe have some cake after. But anyway, um, <laughs> so we have, um, uh, like uh, as uh, Andy said, the sponge layer, <laughs> which is the fast tips orders. And fast means um, uh, frequent author series tips. And these are your pre-pub um, automatic orders. And when you, when we would profile for something like this, it is highly customized to whatever authors and series you would like to see. And um, it's so customized that we can uh, provide these orders to you on a weekly, twice monthly or monthly basis. It's, it's absolutely your choice. Um, there are a couple of ways um, actually three ways that we can provide these to you. Uh, one way is that uh, we go ahead and apply the grids that you've chosen uh, set up and uh, go ahead and submit those orders on your behalf um, in uh, bibs or we can uh, notify you and uh, share the orders with you, the fully gridded orders for you to review and then you let us know if they're ready to submit through bibs and we can do that for you. And then the third way is we can prepare the orders, share them with you, so you can order them uh, via EDI. So, um, so the, uh, when we share them with you, you would receive an email from one of our plans coordinators letting you know that, hey, they, they are available and uh, for, for you to take action on them. Uh, so when we would uh, uh, profile together, we would ask about uh, age ranges, classifications, your bind preference, uh, descriptors, what you would want to include or exclude, like would you want movie tie-ins, would you want special editions, anniversary editions, things like that. Uh, we would gather all of that information and then we would want to know how pre-pub you would like to go. Uh, it's, it's really up to you. We have some that go six months, but uh, pre-pub, for example, but uh, you know, publishers change their, um, their, their uh, publishing uh, quite often when they release a title. So, um, but it's really up to you, however you would want to do it. So three months is usually good. And you can include uh, best-selling authors. And at the end of this, I will uh, we'll explore broadartbooks.com together. So you can see a list of our um, suggested authors and series uh, that you can add to or, um, or delete some of them. Uh, or you can um, uh, add something, you know, uh, authors or series of local interest as well. It's not a closed list. So that's basically uh, my point here. Um, really, the sky is the limit. And again, this is a free service. So that sponge cake layer um, is off the top. Like we have to have, we have to have a sponge cake layer. I mean, that's the, that's the basis of it. And then um, the other part of, of ongoing collection development um, is the selection list. Again, they can, okay, we've got that off the top. Now what do we do with all of these other titles? How do I manage going through millions of titles perhaps? And that's where we offer two types of selection lists. And the first that I will discuss is the diamond tips selection list. And some people say notification list, it's, it's the same. So it's a paid subscription where again, you can customize whether you would want to receive it weekly, twice monthly or monthly. And you could do a mix of it too. I have some customers who prefer to have some of their um, uh, selectors receive lists more frequently than others. Some are fine with receiving it monthly. So it's really up to you. It, it, it's, it's, it's not a big change on our part. So. Uh, again, as with uh, fast tips, we customize the age range, we classifications, you tell us which binds to include, as well as the descriptors, uh, the publication windows, how far post-pub and pre-pub would you like these to go, 
uh, children's titles, for example, um, the review journals can go pretty far back. Uh, there's a really interesting chart that's available on our website that uh, uh, analyzes review journals from uh, the previous year, so 2019, and it shows um, how far pre-pub and post-pub these review journals go. And some of it's pretty surprising. Uh, there are some Kirkus titles I've seen that are, can be like 10 years old, and they just now reviewed them. So that's something that we would want to talk about. Uh, you can include publishers. Subjects, we have the tip subjects. Uh, did you want to include computer books? Is that important to you? Maybe childcare parenting, maybe some test prep. Um, and then we can also include your authors and or series. Uh, again, those that you don't want to have on fast tips, but you still would want to see them. And then of course with diamond tips, uh, it, it's the, the main part of diamond tips are these, these review journals. These are really important. Um, but also that's growing in importance, um, uh, importance is, is the public library demand. And it's, uh, again, what other libraries are buying. Um, and again, it's not bookstores, it's libraries. The high print runs and uh, the Brodart programs. So the silver tips list, which are those curated uh, monthly lists. So that is one type of selection list. The other type of selection list is uh, silver tips. And these are our curated, uh, yeah. And this is when I talked about those nine librarians um, and our acquisition staff, uh, they are uh, so important to keep this uh, plugging along. They, uh, they identify some of the best titles um, for these programs and they are available to post directly to a Bibs ID. And you can choose some or you can choose all, and they are free. And as you can see, there are um, over 20 um, programs, uh, all sorts, uh, as you can see with the uh, graphic, all the way from graphic novels to Spanish. You have urban fiction and Christian fiction and board books you name it. And we, we, we spend a lot of time on these and we, we receive a lot of positive feedback on them on how, uh, how well constructed they are and kind of on the money with the, uh, especially with those really popular titles. So uh, when we go to Brodart's website, I can show you a few definitions for some of these in case you were wondering, well, what, how are these made? So then there are, there's the cherry on top. It's the collection builder. And this is free to Brodart customers and their periodic selection lists uh, for whatever you need. Uh, they could be grants, like Andy had mentioned, uh, special projects. We had a library in Georgia recently want to rebuild their Southern literature collection. Well, we've got a couple of librarians that live in Atlanta, and they were really excited to be doing that. So, um, so we helped with that. Uh, classics refresh for those, uh, the teen area, uh, perhaps for high school reading, uh, state and regional topics, and um, lists to match your replacement and weeding calendars. Uh, the uh, well-chewed board books are just not good and they need to be replaced. The greasy, full of flour, cookbooks are not good anymore. We need to redo those. So we're here for that. <laughs> so you just let us know, or I need a list of GED titles or things like that. Um, uh, we're, we're, we're here for you. Uh, we have a lot of um, experts on staff, as I mentioned, and we'd be happy to help with that. So those are the, the levels with um, fast tip standing orders. Uh, the silver tips list and the diamond tips list and then the collection builders. So what does this look like when, um, uh, you know, it's hard to visualize this, the layering, I suppose. I mean, we can talk about cakes, <laughs> right? But um, now I would like to show you an actual example of a profile summary. And this is what we create after we meet and we have all of the fast tips and tips running. And right here is, uh, the, it's the main page and it's our contact information. I do want to mention that uh, 
we've been told that Broder is, uh, our, our collection development team is highly accessible. Uh, we not only reach out to you occasionally, and in this case with the diamond tips list and fast tips, we reach out once a year to see if you would like to make any changes. Uh, but they, everyone knows that they can reach out to us at any point in time and let us know if they would like to make some adjustments. So the, uh, but our, our contact information is here. And what I like about these profile summaries, not only does it exactly show um, how the lists are constructed, I think it's really valuable, especially when we have uh, staff turnover, uh, that these are available to review with the new staff. Like, I don't understand how these lists are made. Could you, could you explain this to me? It's all documented somewhere and we always update it. Even if there's one small change, we update it and we send a new copy for the files, but we also keep it if you just wanna reach out and, and ask for it. So with this sample, the um, popular ABC library <laughs> with Jane Doe as the contact, uh, they decided to choose fast tips, diamond tips, and silver tips. So they did a lot of layering here. And with this, it's the adult summary uh, here. And I, we make a quick note at the top saying that the categories are listed in the order they're created and ISBNs are blocked from one list and category to another unless otherwise noted. And that's important because these, the adult fiction, um, the fast tips, adult fiction authors and the travel guide series that they wanted is off the top. These will not appear in a subsequent selection list unless you want them to. I've had some libraries that want to repeat them for whatever reason, and that's fine. So we put everything in here. I don't have the list of these authors and travel guides. I, I, I didn't think that was necessary for today's discussion, but we do things like we, you know, um, book shots, um, very popular. So we only want a quantity of one. So that changed from what you had, uh, said for James Patterson, for example, um, like you wanted 25 copies of James Patterson, but you know, if it does book shots, we only want one. So we're, we drill down to the very specifics of what you need because this is essential, this is an order. It's, it's not a list, fast tips are, are orders. So fast tips off the top, they won't be seen again on the selection list. Then this library wanted to say, I want two fiction diamond tips lists. I want the best sellers, in one list, and then I want reviews and some Brodart sources on another list. So they wanted to take these off the top, so another layer, get these out of the way, and then they want to see everything else for adult fiction. Then there's Urban Fix. Jesse Doe is working on another project, an urban fiction project. So it was here in the adult fiction list but Jesse wants a separate list. So duplication is allowed between here. So that just gives you an idea of, of how we dedupe and don't dedupe. We just make a note here. And then we go down to the nonfiction and it's parenting. So this library wanted to have a parenting list and they just wanted to pull by, not by review journals or tips programs, but by our child care and parenting tips subject. So that's another layer. But then with parenting excluded, we want everything else in adult nonfiction. So all of the reviews, some broad art sources, and then they want high demand from other libraries. They wanna see what other libraries are um, uh, buying. So it's kind of mixing if we wanna you know, use that baking, you know, it's like a sprinkle of this, a dot of this, you know, um, uh, to make a really customized list. But this library uh, didn't want to have all customized lists. They also just wanted to see our large print um, uh, tip selections. And that again is free, and char free of charge. And it, when it says pub date range, it's, you know, it's, it's still new and pre-pub, as well as our Spanish lists, um, adult Spanish tips selections. And they wanted to include the teen. Teen can go in children's or adult, it's up to you. This library wanted to put it here. And then, uh, we go in and we go through all of the descriptors, the types of material you want to include and exclude. So you can see there's a lot, a lot of questions asked about this. Children's summary is the same thing. 
We got the fast tips off the top. They wanted a layer of board books, but then they wanted picture book reader, picture books and readers from certain publishers. So another layer. And then those that came from review journals, but they only wanted to see easy and fiction there. So there's nonfiction as well. They want to put that in the nonfiction. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. And they even want um, the series made simple. We give that for free. It's SLJ series made simple and it's a biannual list of um, covering all the nonfiction series from educational and library specific publishers. Uh, a lot of librarians like that to uh, children's librarians to see if there are any gaps in the collection. So they wanted to subscribe to that. And then they also wanted our children's uh, Spanish list. So we've got that here. And then, then we go through the whole thing. What do you want reprints? Do you want graphic nonfiction? Where would you want all of this? So that is available to you. Now, quickly going over to um, our Broad Art Books website, and uh, it's broadartbooks.com. And under library services, this is where you can find where everything lives, all of what we just discussed, the tips, the collection biller, the online list, those are the bibs lists, fast tips, and continuations. Continuations is something that um, I'm not going to dive into today, but it's those true serials, uh, test prep, legal guides, uh, travel guides there as well, and even awards like the Caldecott winners, Newberry winners, Coretta Scott King. You can order those uh, through continuation, so, but those would be post-pub because you know, we, they were published before and then they got the honor. So um, all of these are here. So just to quickly go through these, um, the tips list, because this is a really nice chart that I'm going to show you. Um, so this, there, there's two service levels here, all of those that we discussed. And here's the comparison chart. So just if you wanna go back and uh, say, you know, what did Julie say? Oh, just go here and it gives you a very brief um, summary of the differences between the two of them. There's a journal comparisons tab. I think that I love it. It's, if you're into stats, I just downloaded these to save time because my computer can sometimes run slow, but uh, we have, um, uh, statistics about uh, the uh, previous year's review journals by audience. And as you can see, it's, a, it's kind of an eye opener. It's not surprising that LJ is, is primarily adult, but, um, and of course, BCCB would be more children's and teen and easy and very little adult. But it's just, it's just kind of an interesting pie chart of, of all of the different journals and how they review things. We also have the audience breakdown here. So you can see how many reviews Booklist did in 2019 and how they were broken down by age. And then we do the timeliness. We talked about how, um, how like Kirkus has been doing quite a bit of post pub, quite a bit. And you can see the six month plus, they do 506, uh, 506 of their reviews were, were six months or more post pub. But not surprisingly, LJ Prepub Alert is very prepub. So six months or more for the most part. So this is, this is an interesting chart. Um, and then we have it broken down in all different ways and classifications. I highly recommend it if you just are like, oh, I wonder, you know, what, what their criteria is, all these journals. So, so that is available for you. Um, to uh, going back to uh, the library services, uh, when we, um, if, if, you, if you are interested in tips and fast tips, there are profiles you can fill out. Uh, if it's customized, we usually like to meet with you. So if you do diamond tips and even fast tips, just so we're on the same page. And maybe like if you say, I don't want a descriptor and then I can say, well, if you exclude it, you may not see certain kinds of titles um, like graphic novels and um, the adapt, adaption, uh, um, um, adaptation and translation descriptors, you might miss out on seeing some graphic novels. So we like to do that together. And you would um, uh, go into either of those, but here's a, here's a fast tips profile, just as an FYI. Uh, again, we would go through this probably together. And then we also have Spanish fast tips. And because it's a different, different animal, and we have five lists 
um, orders that are available, but they could also be selection lists if you do not want to order, have an order uh, created for these every month. Uh, and we know that not maybe, maybe your library doesn't uh, have a lot of money for the Spanish collection. Uh, you know, if, if, if funding is tight for it, we actually um, have uh, given an estimate for how much the, uh, these would cost. Um, uh, the, the titles would be like for this one would be on average $340 a month, just so you can do some budgeting. And then again, and this is a Spanish Fast Tips profile. Um, again, it's very short. Uh, for the, um, if you wanted to sign up for Fast Tips, I mentioned our recommendation lists, and um, let me go back here and show you where these lists, so you go into Fast Tips, and then you can download our author list, our authors and series listings. I already have one downloaded here. Oh, and as you can see at the bottom here, there's a Spanish Fast, fast Tips. But it's the same profile. And these are just suggestions. This is a children's. We try to update these once a year, uh, but it gives author rankings of our most popular authors, as you can see. And then we have our picture book series. And so not only do we have the series name and the publisher, but when they started, the price for the, the binds that they come in. And then this is a kind of a worksheet. So you could uh, input your branch information here add more if you'd like, and then your collection code, item type, fun code, and if there's a series cutter you'd want to use. So this is here, and we have them for all of these, as you can see. So, so that lives there. Um, and then going to the tips. Julie, yeah. mm -hmm. um, just before you jump off of that, I feel like you're, you're right there, and we have a question that kind of relates to that. Sure. So I know you, you went through that pretty quickly and I think you may have answered the question, but we did have someone ask um, when they start a new frequent authors and series, when they start a new fast tip standing order, um, whether or not we provided a list of authors for them to work from or if they had the autonomy to add authors that they were tracking um, outside of that list, if it could even include things like local authors. Yes, absolutely. That is just um, a starting point. Those, uh, those lists that you see here, um, just, just our suggestions based on um, our demand. Uh, so these are pop, these are our Art's most popular authors and series. Uh, you buy, it's, you, you, you don't have to use them or you can use some of them, but we encourage you, it's not, none of these are closed lists. So if you have some authors and series that you don't see listed on here, absolutely feel free to, to add to them. Wonderful. And then we had two questions. I know you were getting ready to jump into silver tips and they relate to that. They were both questions about range and variety, asking about, um, you know, our work that we do with graphic novel collection development and also Spanish, uh, yep. whether or not we had a wide variety. So if I want to talk about that, maybe even some of your peers in the collection development department. Yes. Uh, so the to uh, answer the question about the tips profile. So this is um, uh, um, on our website. And again, let me, let me back up here. So you go to here, collection development, selection lists, and tips. And then down here, uh, do, 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 start your profile. And then here would be the tips, but I've already have it downloaded. So I will show it to you here. This is what is included. Um, it's very brief. If they want to, if a library would like to have a little bit more information, like how far pre-pub do you go? You know what? What else? What else is included in these? We have that information I could share, but this is just a brief overview of what's in these 20 plus programs. So there's that. Um, one of our most popular programs, uh, speaking of graphic novels, is the Kids Safe Graphic Novel Silver Tips, and our uh, graphic novel expert is Kat Khan. And she literally looks at these book in hand. They should not be challenged. You should be feel comfortable that these are appropriate for that age group. Um, sometimes she disagrees, Kat disagrees with what the publisher has said based on what she's seeing and her criteria. And that information, actually, if you want to go here, is um, uh, she explains the selection criteria uh, for and, and the age ranges because they do differ from what the publisher says and also what review journals say. So I encourage everyone to to look at at this and then you can read a little bio about cat. Uh, so for Spanish, 
Um, we have uh, Jessica Blaker and Nerissa Moran, our Spanish experts, and they do a lot, like some of the, uh, the silk, those uh, fast tips, Spanish orders are, are, some of those are book in hand selections. So they've taken the time to do that, to narrow the universe of titles. It's a much smaller universe than English, but it's still a big universe where uh, sometimes they need to make sure that uh, things are appropriate for a library. There are things that, for example, um, uh, uh, like dialect, um, you know, S S Spain, uh, Spanish from Spain is different from Latin American Spanish. Um, they note that information. Uh, maybe something, uh, you know, Americans can be more conservative than, than, than Spaniards. And so some of their, or in other Latin American countries, so they make sure that it's appropriate for libraries that there maybe is no nudity in a children's book. Like it's just, we wanna make sure that it's not, uh, that, that it's absolutely appropriate for a library. And, um, and even grammar. So there's a lot of material that comes out and we want to make sure that the, the grammar is appropriate um, for a library as well. Uh, that's one, one of the reasons that you don't see too much of like um, building guides, construction guides, because they don't have the same um, uh, standards, like building standards uh, as, as the United States. So that would be irresponsible for us to promote a title that if they have, uh, you know, and the, the construction word is um, escaping me, but um, anyway, uh, you know, the measurements and things like that, uh, that is something to consider with, with, with uh, Spanish language material. And Nerissa and Jessica make sure that everything that we offer is appropriate for libraries. So um, going to, this is the Silver Tips profile, just want to quickly show, and again, we have the so you don't have to flip back. There's uh, the definitions, very brief. Again, I can provide um, more in-depth definitions if that would be helpful to you. And then here's the diamond. And this is, I'm not gonna go through, but look how long this is. I mean, we, when I say we customize, we customize. So there's the silver tips if you wanted to include those. We can include our fast tips authors and series if you'd like. Uh, publishers, and then we ask how far pre-pub would you like to go with some of these? Here's our subjects. So we have a lot of questions to ask, and that's why sometimes it's it's important to to maybe just have a phone call or a Zoom meeting to to go over everything. Here's a um, the bestseller list and how often do you want it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one quick thing. So going to lists, I wanted to show uh, when I talked about that uh, the schedule for. Um, uh, tips and uh, fast tips. Uh, there's a schedule here, right here, um, the tips schedule, and it shows the actual dates that they will be uh, posted, the tips list. And um, so you don't receive notifications, an email notification that they've been posted, but just go to this calendar and you can see when the list will be available. And so these are for the diamond tips list. Um, it would be the week of, if you did fast tips, so it would be the week of, uh, so next week, fast tips monthly runs. So you would get it sometime that fast tips order sometime that week of next week. And then down here are for the silver tips. So we kind of stagger them a little bit, but at least you would know uh, when they will be there. Uh, the descriptor, um, descriptors I was talking about, we have the definitions here just so we're all on the same page, uh, should we profile. So there's that. And then um, there's a selection list guide here um, because for those that joined um, the Bibs uh, webinars last week, this is uh, the descriptions of each of the, of the lists. Now there are a lot of lists in Hot Topics, for example, but at least you know that that is a um, up to the moment newsworthy subject and so if we go there, here under featured lists and hot topics, here we go. Um, so we have uh, books for young activists and um, uh, LGBT, uh, Pride Month, Black Lives Matter, epidemics, uh, 
working and learning at home that was just posted. Uh, all of these, and especially, you know, with, with authors passing away, we have all of these here. Um, as you, it just goes on and on and on. It's a really great area to find, maybe if you're trying to do a display or beef up an area, uh, I would highly encourage you to go, to go here. There is um, uh, the We Need Diverse Books um, initiative. Uh, it's a grassroots organization. We have responded to that. I don't know if anyone went to PLA. It seems like a lifetime ago, but it was only, what, three, four months ago, almost four months ago. And there was a, um, a, a panel on, uh, you know, how to make your uh, collection diverse. And I attended it and I want to say, just go to Broad Art because we have, <laughs> we've been doing this. <laughs> we've been um, collecting and organizing uh, diverse books and we have them, um, you know, not only for Spanish, but broken down by age ranges. And we even have them for adults. So um, broken down by fiction and nonfiction. Uh, YA Reads for Adults is popular as well. Um, one of the things I do want to point out um, before I, I wrap this up is uh, early literacy story time. And um, it's in response to, um, well, it, it actually is for, these titles were selected because of the skills and practices uh, created by Every Child Ready to Read, if you're familiar with that. And one of our librarians, who is a former Caldecott committee member, she uh, updates these on, I think, a uh, six-month basis, I, I, I believe. So she, she has all of these organized. Um, so just go here, and it's cumulative. So there might be some older books in here, but that's fine um, for your story time, uh, early literacy collection. So... Um, that is, I know I went through a lot and it's a lot to take in, but I encourage everyone to, uh, to explore this area here. Um, uh, in, you know, there's Spanish, I didn't even open that up, but it's, it's right here, but it, it just gives a, a Mexican bookstore uh, bestsellers. It's kind of like the New York Times bestsellers for Mexico. That is extraordinarily popular. Um, uh, so I, I encourage everyone to, um, uh, to explore that area as well. But, uh, oh, I hope uh, everyone is not uh, <laughs> too hungry for cake or want some cake. But uh, I just want to stress that uh, our team is uh, responsive and accessible. And that's another thing that sets us apart, I, I hope. Um, you know, we respond within 24 hours. It's usually just a few minutes later <laughs> um, because we, we, we know it's important to get a response and to help. And because there are two over, you know, 2.7 million available and not yet published titles, we all could use some help. And that's what we're here for. Well, and I know we've got, let's see, seven minutes to go. I want to give a, a window here for a few more questions in case anybody else has one. If there's anything here you were curious about. I know I did see a question about um, fees, and I think that it was mentioned, but it does bear restating. When we're talking about standing orders, whether it's fast tips or continuations, um, there is no fee to set that service up. Uh, there's no fee to edit. Certainly our staff will reach out. They try to reach out about once a year for a tune-up just to make sure that those authors and, and subjects and series or serials are what they should be for your order going forward. But you can reach out um, in between as often as you'd like. We know new staff come online every day. And if you're a new teen selector, you may have a new area of emphasis. You know, you may have spotted that hole in your collection. And so those are ways that we can help you to address that. And yes, of course, there is no fee for that. Um, the same is true for the collection builder. I just want to reiterate also, there was another question. That is a periodic service. So as something pops up, as there's a project, whether it be something like a grant or a, you know, retrospective project related to maybe some weeding or having spotted that hole, that's something that we can generate as we need to. Um, yeah, and all of that to say, we got about six minutes. Julie, I think you've got the controls. Mm -hmm. Since you're at broadartbooks.com and two URLs, uh, one more time, broadartbooks.com is where we are right now. This is our, 
our homepage, if you will, um, but also bibs.com. That is the uh, URL for our online collection development and ordering tool. But back to Broad Art Books, if you would, mm -hmm. I was just going to point out kind of in the upper right, there is um, oh. a link there for Find a Rep. I know we've got some people joining us today um, who are perhaps new to Broad Art in general. So if you're curious about how to get in touch with us, there's a great map here. And as you mouse over um, and find your state, you know, for example, Julie is going to shout it out for Michigan. I hear oh, tell she might be yeah. calling yeah. us from Michigan today. Julie, if you want to go ahead and click on that, you'll see that your library services consultant is Courtney Wolf. So if anyone were to have a question about who to reach out to, um, we're just, we're so happy to talk to you about the services that we have available to collect, uh, you know, to connect you back to our collection development team. This is a way to get in touch with us if you don't already know how. Oh, and Ken to the rescue, by the way, Julie, he, he noted earlier that we were trying to say codes when we were, to, when you were discussing like the translation oh, between yes. uh, Spanish from Spain and uh, U.S. translations as it relates to buildings. We were, we were trying to describe like the difference between standard measurements and, building and you know, the measurements that they use in the U.K. and building codes. So thank building. you, Ken. Yes. Ken gets a reference uh, statistic mark for the day. Whether your library is open or not, Ken, you get to report that one back to the state library. You're welcome. <laughs> yes, thank you. I don't that it just totally escaped me. It was it was funny. I should also mention that there's a real um, some really good information here with our uh, newsletter, um, like that Spanish um, information that I was talking about. I think it was I wrote a, an article about the ins and outs of selecting Spanish and how it's very different from English. And then, um, uh, yeah, the, we're in the archive. Uh, but uh, other, th there are other, let me see here. Um, it was very similar to, there's just so much here. There's here a lot of really good content here. Yeah. And you can go back and read this. This really is another free tool. Mm -hmm. So this goes into like, um, this is from Jessica Blaker, one of our Spanish experts, and she wrote an article and I wrote one um, uh, like a year before, um, kind of covering the same things, but it was uh, how, you know, with Spanish, you don't want to uh, say, I only want new titles because some translations take time, especially from English language. So uh, it could be years until, so, just be so when the, the term new is very different uh, when it comes to sp uh, Spanish material, you may want to go back a little bit. So it's new to us, but it's not necessarily a new pub date. Um, so there's just and then the appropriate the prudeness, <laughs> prudish American library. <laughs> so um, anyway, so it, it's just something to to take a look at. And we also have a little blog here um, from uh, librarian to librarian. And uh, just some things off the top of our heads that, uh, you know, just, just some thoughts. So uh, we, have, we have that available as well. But I really like the, um, uh, the newsletter. It gives a lot of great information. So just, just yes. explore, yeah, broadartbooks.com um, and, and bibs, bibs mm -hmm. with the lists have a lot of interesting things for you. Well, and if I could beg one more favor of you as we wrap up here, Julie, if you would head back over to Bibbs and just hit the home page for me. Sure. Um, one more thank you to everyone who joined us today. We really appreciate your time. I know everybody is, is scrambling right now so that you make time for this means the world to us. We just want to make sure you're aware of what's out there for you. Um, all of that's to say, we're always looking for ways to improve. So there will be a short survey like you. We love our surveys. Uh, be looking for that in your inbox. And um, if you are somewhat new to Broad Art or you're somewhat new to Bibs, maybe you're a newer selector, uh, right here on the homepage, Julie has kind of scrolled right to it. We recently had a Bibs 101 and Bibs Masterclass to kind of give people either an introduction or for those who've been using uh, Bibs for a while and maybe have more administrative roles, um, options for, for using the format either of those ways. And then the tips and tricks that you see right at the top, tutorial number one, that's really, I think, applicable for anybody. You know, if you, it, it covers the gamut of things that are somewhat beginner all the way to things that are a little more, uh, you know, for the advanced users. So definitely um, check those out if you've not already. And know that um, very soon this webinar will be there as well. So if you'd like to share it, you'll have the opportunity. Um, so thank you so much. On behalf of Brodart, on behalf of uh, Julie and myself, we'd like to thank you. And we hope you guys all have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.